Hello everybody, this is Stalker Finance. I am your host, David Scheuer, and today we're going to be talking about how to invest in uncertain markets since today's markets and economy are certainly uncertain. Let's get into it. So first off, you're a very like intelligent investor. You're someone who's, you know, been through the ropes, you've been through this before, then you probably don't need to watch this video because it's more basic stuff. But for those of you who are new to this or this is a first time thing happening, then let's go ahead and talk about these five different points that I've created for you. So first off is think long term. When you're investing, you generally want to think long term unless you are a swing or day trader. And you know, thinking long term will allow you to realize the long term gains and the long term potential from your investments, not these short term moves in the stock market. So if your company went down 10% due to the coronavirus or 20%, think long term. Think, okay, it's a solid company. It's going to do well in 50 years or in 10 years from now, in five years from now, however long your time horizon is. I know it'll be thriving. I know it'll be a good company. That's how you want to think because that's how you'll know that you've made good investments and that. Your investments are going to be more safe and not worry as much as other people who may be freaking out. So that brings me down to my next point, which is average down and sell smartly. A lot of people come to me saying, when should I sell? When should I buy? When should I do this? And in my opinion, most of my stocks, I am not selling. In fact, I'm holding on. And as the prices decrease, I'm simply buying more and averaging those prices down. Because I know as again, you go back to the first point I'm thinking long term five years from now, or a couple years from now, or however long, once this coronavirus things over over once the economy recovers, I know that these companies will still be around. I know they will be solid companies. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more about solid companies later on. But I know that just averaging these prices down will give me a really good price point because if you're going to sell the stock and try to buy it back at a lower point, the stock could just as easily turn around and go back up and you just missed out on an opportunity and then you end up buying the stock at a higher price and you missed out on that money, that percentage gain. And it's really hard to time the market. You never know. I mean, all it takes is the president to come out and announce a new policy or the Fed to do something about interest rates. It's all it takes is one little thing that we can't really predict when it's going to happen unless you have inside information. And since you can't predict that, simply averaging down your stock price and getting that better stock price rather than getting greedy and trying to sell it and then time the market, which you can do, but it's incredibly hard to do. And pretty much no one can accurately time the market, but you can buy and hold. And that's why averaging down is so important. But then let's talk about selling smartly because that was the second part to this point. So selling smartly, especially in the coronavirus, is something that you need to take into consideration. Because sometimes, you know, there may be companies that, hey, they're not going to recover from this. In fact, if you bought them, you know, at the height of the coronavirus, if you high, I'm talking about the coronavirus a lot. It's a relevant topic right now, to the, and it's affecting the economy. It's very relevant to this video. But anyways, if you bought, you know, a stock at the tip of the 2008 financial crisis, you know, let's say you bought Bear Stearns, for example, and you just kept holding, kept averaging down, well, they're gone. I mean, some stocks and companies don't recover. You know, there there will be some companies in uh, today's economy that do not recover from uh, this, I guess, economic decline right now. It's not technically a recession because that's two consecutive losses in GDP or two consecutive declines in GDP, just so you guys know. But, um, you know, this economic decline right now and this kind of just weird market at the moment is, you know, no there's going to be some companies that don't make it through. It's harsh, but that's what it is. And you're going to need to sell. So how do you know when to sell those type of companies? Well, let's go ahead and just just look at what's happening. You got to look at the news. You got to read up on your research. You got to look at the company's balance sheets. Okay, is this company doing well? Do they have a lot of cash on hand? If it's Apple, for example, if it's Google, they have tons of cash on hand. They're going to survive pretty much no matter what. Even if they stop selling completely, their stock would plummet. But they'd probably still survive, honestly. Um, they have so much cash. And so, you know, those type of companies have a lot of cash on hand. They're really solid companies are going to survive. Whereas ones that maybe are a little shaky, maybe their balance sheets, maybe they're not profitable right now. They've actually been losing money and now this hit them. And you know what? They, they might not make it through this since they just don't have the money. Or it could be things that are specifically affected, you know, like the, uh, the airplane industry, uh, Boeing's been hit pretty hard. You know, there's stuff like that, that it's, it's probably a good time to sell if they cut their dividends that's another reason to sell. You know, if you're receiving this dividend and you're holding on simply because you know you're receiving this dividend and they cut it, well, then why are you holding it now? Are you simply just bag holding, hoping that it goes back up? Or do you know that it's a solid company and it'll eventually return to a solid price or uh, continue trending upwards? So anyways, this brings us to our next point here, which is take emotion out and set limit orders. So now we're getting to a specific trade order that can really help you with uncertain markets. 
First off, emotion is ridiculous. I mean, people will get very emotional when it comes to this. You've seen the news. You've seen people freaking out about what to do with their stock investments, how to trade, what to do. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here as well as a bunch of other investors who are like, you know what? I have limit orders set. Now, what is a limit order? A limit order is simply a order in which it sells at a certain price, and it's a stop limit order. So if your price falls, if the stock price falls and it hits the price that you want to execute at, it'll sell at that price. That means if it goes lower, you don't have to worry about it. You know, if it hits that price, it'll sell. It's kind of like a safety barrier, a safety net to where you know that no matter what, you will sell at that price so you won't take any more losses. And for stocks that we've made a large gain on, especially, you know, in this past bull market, people were up 100% even more on certain companies in very short time periods. And now all those gains have been wiped out. But if you had set you know, stop limit orders, then what you could have done is said, okay, you know what, I'm going to set it 20% below what it's at right now. It's a pretty big, you know, it's a pretty big loss right there, but still I'm going to set it 20% below what it's at, or maybe 10%, you know, and then you can go ahead and if it hits that, it'll sell and you just don't worry about it. And, or you come back and you, you wait for the market to settle and then you re-enter in and then you can average down, etc. But that's just a way to kind of take emotion out of the game there. Uh, one important part of this, if, if you do sell, if it does hit the limit order and it sells, just don't look at it. Don't look back. It's okay. There's going to be more than one opportunity. You only need one good opportunity to make money, a few opportunities to make a lot of money. You don't need to get every single time right. And so if you miss out on an opportunity, don't worry. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, just relax, don't get emotional, don't get angry. There's a lot of people who they sell and they're like, oh no, why did they do that? But it's like, look, did you make 20% on that stock this year? Well, yeah, I did. That's a really good gain. If you beat the market, you're doing a great job and you have to remember that. All right, anyways, so, so far we have think long-term, average down, but sell smartly. And then we have take emotion out and place limit orders. So our last one, which is kind of something we've been talking about throughout this video is buy solid companies that pay dividends. Um, the Warren Buffett approach. A lot of people know about this and there's a lot of great YouTubers on here who talk specifically about the strategy. However, and I'm actually going to recommend one here, Joseph Carlson. You should go check him out. He kind of has a podcast style video, goes over news and this is all his strategy is just buy, hold solid companies that pay dividends. And it's really, he makes great content. So go check him out. But anyways, um, as I was talking about, buy companies that have cash on hand, that have good balance sheets, that have technology that you know is going to improve or that are innovating into the future. Companies that are growing substantially, um, companies that you know can survive, you know, recessions, depressions, companies that will make it through change that are adapting to the world. These companies are the ones that are going to make it through these times, while those other ones may, might not recover, might not make it. So you want to pick these solid stable companies companies that have a lot of experience in this like microsoft you know it's an older company um you know honestly even boeing is a pretty older company disney's a great example right now its parks are closed and it's been suffering some you know tragic losses due to that but it has disney plus that it invented which right now i bet there's thousands or hundreds of thousands of people maybe more all buying disney plus since we're all locked inside so they're going to come out of this i think actually ahead with even more disney plus users and their parks are going to open back up, and everybody's going to rush to the parks instantly. Disney is one of those companies that adapts and is a really solid company with a great balance sheet as well, and it has history to prove that it survived a long time through depressions, through recessions, recessions, geez, I can't talk, <laughs> etc. And the best part about these companies, you really want to find companies that pay dividends. Now, it's important that they pay dividends because that means you're getting income from these companies you know, every quarter, every month, whenever they pay dividends. And that's important because even if the stock market is going down and you're just going to hold this company through, it's still going to pay you this dividend. You're still going to get a nice return on your money. So even if the if the stock is down 5 or 10%, hey, you're still going to receive, you know, you're still going to be up 5% in dividends that um, that year, which will, you know, it, it'll shorten your losses there or it'll just be a nice income. So when the stock rebounds and, and the solid company continues on, you'll still have this dividend income coming in. So anyways, guys, that was the main point of the video. I'm just going to go over it really quickly here. Think long term, average down, but sell when necessary and sell smartly. Uh, take a motion out and set a limit order or a stop limit order in order to take a motion out of trading there. Buy solid companies that pay dividends. And that's probably the most important one out of this entire thing. There's a big difference between investing and gambling. And a lot of people don't know the difference. So just keep that in mind.
Now, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about our book of the day here. Um, I'm doing this now where every video at the end of it, I'm going to introduce a book related to business or finance that I've read. It's encouraging me to read more, and I think I'll encourage you to read more. So today's book right here is Gary Vee's Crush It. A lot of you have probably heard of this book. A lot of YouTubers talk it, but I recently just kind of blew through it. It's a short book. took me about a day to read, maybe less, honestly. And um, yeah, this is a great book. It's true what people say. This book is awesome. However, it is a little outdated. There's a lot of stuff. You know, he talks about MySpace in here. He talks about YouTube was barely just a thing. So when he's talking about advertising and stuff in here, he kind of, I kind of skipped through a lot of that stuff because it really wasn't uh, relevant anymore just because, you know, there's a lot of new companies. There's been a lot of innovation since then. It's just kind of an older book. However, um, this the motivation that's in here, the... The stuff just about how he grew his company, his story, I think is really important to a lot of entrepreneurs, uh, whether you're, no matter what business you're in. So I'd go ahead and read this book. I'm going to put a link to uh, it in the description of my video.